All right, today we are going to do three, two. We're gonna solve quadratic functions by graphing. Um, when we are solving these, what we're looking for is where it crosses the x-axis at. That's gonna be the solution to a quadratic function. So um, anytime I ask us to solve a quadratic function, we're looking for the zeros or the x-intercepts of the graph, okay, zeros, x-intercepts, and solutions are all kind of intertwined in these. So when we are looking for the solutions to quadratic functions, it's the same thing as finding the x-intercepts of the function. So we can pick out where it crosses the x-axis at. This one crosses at negative four and at two. So x equals negative four and two would be the x-intercepts and the solutions. This one crosses at negative one and one, two, three, four. So negative one, four would be the x-intercepts on that one. Okay, this one, it crosses at zero and at negative three. So negative three and zero. Now they might list these as ordered pairs. If they do, this would be negative three, zero, and zero, zero. This one would be negative four, zero, and two, zero, and so on. But I'm okay with you just listing x equals and whatever it is. This one would be x equals negative one and positive one. So you can see that these uh, parabolas, they can result in two solutions. They can result in one solution. Let me show you what that would look like right here. Um, if it had just one solution, then the vertex of that parabola would be sitting right on the x-axis right there. That would be one solution. Um, or it could have no solutions, and that would look like this, like where it's either up above it or down below it and not touching the x-axis at all. Okay, it'll still have solutions, but they'll be imaginary. You'll have no real solutions if that's the case. Okay, in this one, it'll just have one solution right there wherever it touches that. Okay, so solving quadratic equations uh, by graphing means we're looking for those x-intercepts where it crosses the x-axis at the zeros of the function. So look at this first equation. Um, before we can graph it to see what it would be, before we can graph it, we have to get it all set equal to zero and get it in the right form. Okay, so I'm going to subtract the four X and the 14 over. Put my like terms together. So that means like that 10 and the negative 14 are gonna go together. That would be minus four. The minus four X, it doesn't have any like terms over here. So it's just hanging out. And then the minus X squared is out there up front. That equals zero. Okay, so I've rearranged it, moved everything over to the left, got it in the correct order. Now I'm gonna find the axis of symmetry and graph this like we practiced in the previous lesson going to give me a negative negative four negative b over two a will give me four over negative two so negative two is the x value of the vertex that's also the oh, negative two also the axis of symmetry goes through x equals negative two to find the vertex so i plug that back in find out what the y value is of the vertex. Plug that negative two back in here. Would give me negative, negative two squared minus four times negative two minus four. That'd be negative four plus eight minus four. Negative four plus eight minus four is zero. So my vertex is at negative two zero. And then from there, the graph is opening down down one over one in each direction. It goes through negative four is my y-intercept. Remember that's that C value. So my parabola is opening down like this. So the only place it touches that y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis that is at negative two. The only zero of the function is negative two. So the solution of the equation is negative two 
or x, if they're using this notation, x equals negative two. Okay, so that is the solution to this quadratic equation. What if there's two real solutions? So it says use a quadratic equation to find two real numbers with a sum of 24 and a product of 143. Let x represent one of the numbers. Then 24 minus x will represent the other number, right? Because it says the sum of the numbers is 24. So if one of the numbers is 24, I'm sorry, is x, then 24 minus x will represent the other number. Okay, and then they tell us that the product of them is 143. So x times 24 minus x equals 143. Okay, so just a minute, let me make sure I explain that well enough. It says let x represent one of the numbers, and then it tells me the sum of the numbers is 24. That means whatever that number is plus x, the other number is going to equal 24. So that number equals 24 minus x. That's where they came up with this. 24 minus x is the other number. Together, if you multiply them, it says the product, that means you multiply them together, it's 143. Okay, so we have this quadratic function because of this information we would distribute. That's already been done. And then they subtracted. No, they didn't. They added everything this way. They added x squared and subtracted 24x over to this side. Added x squared, subtracted 24x over, and they got this. Okay, so you're going to use this as an example. It's going to give you some more problems like this, but they'll all be set up similarly to that. Um, Negative b over 2a, that gives me a negative, negative 24 over 2 times 1. That's positive 24 divided by 2 is 12. So my axis of symmetry is 12. I need to find that vertex plug that 12 back in here. So 12 squared minus 24 times 12 plus 143 equals, let me grab a calculator real quick. Twelve squared plus no nope, minus twenty four times twelve minus plus one hundred and forty three equals negative one. So my vertex is at twelve negative one, and it's going up one over one. A is one. Oh, up one over one. The zeros then are 11 and 13, 11 and 13. Okay, wherever it crosses that axis at. Next, it says to estimate roots. When we estimate roots, we solve it by graphing. So let's do negative b over 2a would be negative 3 over 2 times negative 1. That's 3 halves. Plug in 3 halves to find y. Negative. Thirty-seven over four. So my vertex is at three halves and thirty-seven over four, which thirty-seven over four is about nine and a quarter. Nine and a quarter. 
toggled it, 9.25. Okay, so I have one at 1 1.5 and 9.25. So over 1.5, up 9.25. And it's going down one over one. Down one over one in each direction. My y intercept is at seven. Reflect that over. Let's draw that parabola. The roots appear to be located between, oof. I would say negative one and negative two. And in between three and four. But I can't really tell for sure. Somewhere in between there and there, perhaps. Okay, so we're just estimating where it's at. So as long as your answers are reasonable. Um, this one, we need to get it set equal to zero. I'm going to subtract 31x, add the 144. That gives me x squared minus 24x plus 144 equals zero. So I solve that by graphing. X equals negative B over 2A. That will be 24 divided by 2 is 12. Plug in 12 to find out what the Y is. 12 squared minus 24 times 12 plus 144. at zero. So we have a vertex at 12, zero. I'm going to make this count by say three, three, six, nine, 12, 12, zero. These are just going to count by one. So it's negative one, one. 12, zero, it's opening up one over one. Going up from there. So this one just has one solution and that is at Okay, the next one, it says use a graph to find all the solutions of this. State the pair of consecutive integers with which the roots are located. So we need to graph it. X is equal to negative B over 2A. That's just negative 4.5. Plug that in. Get negative 25.25. So I have a vertex at negative 4.5 and up 25.25. So down negative 25.25. So I'm going to scale this one by twos, two, four, six. So it's negative two, negative four, negative six. And I'm going to count this one by. Fives, five, 
10, 15, 20, 25. Uh oh, it's going to be down here right off the graph. And negative 4.5 will be about right here. Slope is up one over one. So it goes in between, now my scale's by two, so in between zero and negative two. And in between negative eight and negative 10. Um, it says consecutive integers, that's hard to do on this graph. But don't you worry, we're going to learn how to do this on a graphing calculator and then we'll be able to tell exactly. So when we have to estimate this, it can be difficult when doing it by hand, but we can type these in to our graphing calculators and we can find it that way. Let me show you how this is going to be better for us. We got x squared plus 9x minus 5 and I click graph. Then I can see better where it crosses at. Um, it looks like it goes in between zero and negative one. I'm sorry, zero and one, I was wrong. It's in between zero and one and in between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in between negative nine and negative 10. Hey, I was right on that one. At least it was in that range. Oh, you guys can even see that. I'm sorry, I got it graphed. So in between zero and one, and in between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, negative nine and negative 10. Those are my answers. That's what it's in between, is zero and one and negative nine and negative 10. All right, so what if we have to solve this exactly using a graphing calculator? Let's do that. Let's plug that in. We're gonna go to y equals, we're gonna enter that in. We're gonna have negative x squared plus five. Remember use x, t, theta, n for the x tom button for x. We plug that in, I click graph. It says to enter the function and view the table. Oh, that's the graph. Kind of see where it goes through. Looks like it's in between zero and one and in between four and five. Click second table. Look at the table. In between zero and one, it crosses over from negative to positive. And in between three and negative one, it goes back to negative. Okay, it says edit the table settings and find a more accurate location. Use the table set to change the change of the table to 0.1 and look at it again. Okay, so I'm gonna go to table set that's in blue. So I need, no, I need to press a second and then window button. It said to change it to 0.1 to what the table's changing by and look at the table again. Now we can get a little more accurate. It crossed over from negative to positive at 0 0.04 and 0 0.41. Okay, we could look at it for 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 to find a more accurate answer. So I'm gonna change it to 0 0.001. where it changes back to positive. Oh, I'm heading the wrong direction. I guess I'm gonna go up. Oh my goodness. We haven't gone back to positive yet. We're getting closer.
really close. Nope, there we switched to positive. So where do we change over at? Looks like my zero is in between negative 2.02 or 0 0.208 or 0 0.209. It's in between there where it came back to positive. 0 0.209, they say approximately 0 0.209. And then we look for the other end. It's going to be around four somewhere. I'm looking right here and here it changes from positive to negative. So 4.769, they say 4.791, just went and I changed my table again. Hmm. Oh my goodness. I'm going to get to 4.7. I'm going to change the table start to 4.7. There we go, there's team 4.791. I needed to go out a little bit further on my table change to get that exact answer. So we have 4.791 and 0 0.209 on my zeros. Wow, a long time. You guys know what? There's an easier way to do this. We're gonna use it on the next one because that one took us too long. I'm gonna show you a better way. Um, it says, a kicker punts a football at the height of the ball. T seconds is given by this equation. Then it says where H of O is the initial height. If the ball is 1.5 feet above the ground when the punter's foot meets the ball, how long will it take the ball to reach the ground? Okay, so we know H of zero, that initial height is 1.5. So we can plug that in here. And then we're gonna use a calculator to find that. I'm gonna show you an easier way to solve it this time. We got negative 16 T squared. Let's do x plus 50t, 50x plus 1.5. If I click graph, see if we can see. I have one here. Uh, my window's not very good. Let me change my window. I'm going to see up higher. I know it's at least going to go through 1.5 on the y axis. So I need to. There we go. Okay, so I can see the whole parabola. I just changed it so I could see up a little bit higher. I want to find these intercepts. We're going to have one that started at 1.5. So the other point would have been at negative something. We want to find this intercept right here where it hits the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna look for that one. The way I'm gonna do it this time is I'm gonna press second and calculate. I'm gonna find a zero 
We do like we did the other day where we have to do left bound and right bound. So surround it. Left bound means as you're coming from the left. Oh, we didn't do this yet. Arrow over left and right. Okay, you can see the cursor moving. Coming from the left, that's on the left side of this zero. I click enter. It says right bound. So get to the other side of it, click enter, and then guess where it is. So it's about right there. I click enter and it's going to find it for me. It's going to tell me it's 3.154. Let's see what they found. Well, they didn't find it yet. I found 3.51, nope, 3.154. 1547154. They use the calculate feature in this one too. Okay, we got the directions on how to do it. Use the calculate, left bound, right bound, and guess to find that solution. So we got 3.155, and that was feet. Nope, that's seconds until it hits the ground. Three point one five five seconds, the ball will hit the ground. All right. If you need help on the calculator portion, I will help you when you get to that. When it tells you to estimate, you can use your calculator to estimate and graph it for you and estimate it. Um, or you can try your best by hand as long as your answer is reasonable. We'll count it as correct.